And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia, hello! I'm Roy Candy. And I'm Mike Felicio, hello! Today we're taking a look at a game that we all mocked when it first was announced, and that is Splendor Marvel, or Marvel Splendor. It seems like it makes sense going the opposite way. But anyhow, Splendor is one of the most popular games probably that came out in the past decade. And it is also one of the least thematic games that's come out in the past decade. <laughs> uh, every, what's Splendor about? Do you even know? Gems. Yeah. Crafting gems. gems. Poker, poker chips that are gorgeous. That's and that's yeah. Right, you're quite the noble. So we thought, ah, is this just a thematic overlay? Well, to some degree, it is. There's some minor rule changes, uh, but I'm gonna assume that you may never have seen this before or played Splendor at all. So we'll go over how to play the game. And then we'll be back. This is a setup for a four player game with a two or three player game. You'll have fewer tiles and there'll be fewer cards in the deck, or fewer chips here, I mean. Uh, on a player's turn, and players will be taking turns going around the table, you have four different options you can do. One of the options is you can take three chips here from these five main colors, orange, purple, blue, red, and yellow. They just have to be different. So I could take yellow, blue, and orange as my turn. You can also take two chips that are the same color, but if you do that, the pile must have four or less before you do that. So if it's down to uh, two, I can't take those two remaining chips. Uh, you have a limit of 10 chips that you have in your hand, and you're going to be using these chips to buy the different characters that are out here. The characters are sorted in columns, basically showing the expense of each of them. Once you have enough chips to buy something, so for example, this one here is three blue chips. If I have three blue chips on my turn, I can pay those three blue chips and take Craven and put Craven in front of me. Each of these cards is worth victory points, and they also give you a bonus of a color. What that bonus means is if I take Craven, he's not worth points, but from now on, I pay one less purple. So if I want to buy Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider would only cost two yellow and four blue. I don't have to pay the purple. And those bonuses stack. If I have Red Skull here and the Collector, I now have two yellows, and so Ghost Rider would cost only four blue and a purple. And of course, the bigger your combos, the more you have. Most of the cards down here don't have anything special on them or very many points, but they will give you those combos. There's, you can also reserve somebody. You simply take the card. I can't afford it now, but I don't want anyone else to take it. And I'll put that card in front of me. I can have up to three cards reserved. And on my turn, when I buy a card, I can buy one from my hand rather than one of the face-up ones. Uh, whenever you reserve a card, you get a wild chip here. This chip can be used as any color, and that's the only way to get a wild chip. By the way, whether you reserve or take one, the card is instantly replaced from the draw pile. Now, there's a few things out here. You'll notice there's Avenger symbols on some of the cards. The first person to get three Avenger symbols will take this tile. This tile is the Avengers tile. It's worth three points, and you'll keep that until someone gets more Avenger symbols than you. Then you give that to them, and so this will get passed around. Also, the first person to meet these bonuses. These tiles are double-sided, so it'll be different each game. So if this tile's out, the first person to get four red cards and four purple cards will take this, which is worth a bonus of three. And if you take a level three character, every level three character, the first time you take one, you will get the time stone and the green stone here. That's the only way to get it, and you can only get one of them. That's not spent. The only reason you need that is for the victory conditions. Once a person has a card of every color, and they have a green gem, and they have 16 points. They can claim the infinity gauntlet and end the game. Of course, someone else might do it the same turn. Everyone gets equal number of turns, in which case uh, you're going to go to the tiebreaker to see who wins the game there, and whoever has the most points is going to win. Uh, or otherwise you keep playing until someone does win. And that's pretty much it. Component-wise, the chips are very good quality. I mean, these are nice poker chips. They're not only easy to tell apart color-wise, but they also have a different shape surrounding the Infinity Stone, and the Infinity Stone is different. Everyone's going to be able to tell them apart. The card quality itself is okay, but everyone is a different piece of art. 
and the level threes are the big names. So, you know, here you can see Loki and Thor and Captain Marvel and Green Goblin. Now, uh, I went through all the cards in this deck and they are all uh, none, there is no X stuff in here. So no, none of the X-Men or X-Force or anything like that. This is Avengers and Spider-Man and the Inhumans, basically, that side of the universe. I don't know that that matters to anybody. I think the artwork itself is pretty well done. I don't know if it's from the comics or not, or if it's done originally for this game. But either way, it does have a consistent look to it and includes both heroes and villains. <laughs> Alrighty, so now when we went into this, one of us has not played Splendor before. Was that you, Roy? Yeah, I hadn't played Splendor at all. I'd heard about it a ton, but I never actually had a chance. I basically knew it was getting poker chips and getting cards and things like that, but I'd never actually played Splendor. I played Splendor, I want to say I probably played it the most of all of us, because when it first came out, I was just consistently playing it. I played the, the expansion, I played it with my wife, I played it with Melody, I played it at the game group, and I don't remember, you know if you remember Z, at our game group for a while, Splendor was played every single week. You went in, somebody was playing Splendor. There was even a Splendor tournament one time. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, that has since died down, but uh, without the, forgetting the Marvel stuff, Roy, what did you think of the game since you hadn't played it before? I, I thought it was pretty fun. I really enjoy any of these, like, really light, like, like, set collection games where the turns are extremely short. That's the one thing I really love. I love that in other games that are very similar. And I just love the games where it's like, your turn, your turn, your turn, your turn, go, 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 go. And there's just these several actions you can do, but they're all extremely small. So I enjoyed that in other games, and it carried on for me enjoying this game as well. And Mike and Z, where are you on the original Splendor? I think it's fine. I probably rated, uh, gosh, a six or something like that. Uh, and, uh, yes, the theme is certainly boring. The gameplay, I think Roy hit the nail on the head. Quick turns is where it's at. The entire game is a short package. It's quick. You are, there's very little downtime, not because you're involved on every turn, but because those turns are simply so short. So I think it's a fine game. I've also played the app, actually, and I have some mm -hmm. experience with the app. And uh, it's also, a, 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 it, it highlights that fun and that quickness to it. Yeah, I'm in almost exactly the same place as Z. I would probably be looking at about a six. I thought it was a fine game. I, I like how quick and easy it is. I don't have much to add that hasn't been said, but uh, yeah, I think other games do that a little bit better, but Splendor is fine for what it is. Oh, well, then I liked it a lot more than you guys. I want to say mm -hmm. I, I probably gave it an eight or an 8.5. Mm. Um, this changes the game in a few ways from Splendor in that you need to get an even number of colors. You didn't need to do that in Splendor. In Splendor, you just go for points. Um, in this one, you need to get one of every color and chip, a weird component choice. Um, <laughs> and yes. it also has that Avenger tile that passes around from player to player. Those are the major differences other than the theme. So how would you compare this to the original one? Gosh, I think for me, the um, it, this is a minor problem, and I wouldn't think of it if I was not familiar with both, honestly. But I think in the original game, you can go for specializing in a color. Yes. Just slash your discount in some color, like buy a lot, right? And then just be really opportunistic with the tile you buy, with the card you buy that's out there weave your way through what's available and try to be really smart. That's one way where you're sort of shooting the moon, if you would, mm -hmm. and if it pays off, you've won. The opposite way is what this game does. Do a little bit of everything, sort of hedge your bets with getting a discount across the board and just sort of buy your way to success that way, as opposed to snipe your way to success. When a card comes out, it costs eight red and three blue and the one thing you went all in on was red baby it's like yes mm -hmm. that card was made for me you can't really do that as much in this one um strategically i wouldn't necessarily call that cutting the legs out from under the game but it does narrow the lane a little bit 
Yeah, I would I would say it feels slightly more on rails uh, than the original Splendor for that reason, because, you know, everybody has to diversify. You, that's really you can't win without it. And so since everybody is having to diversify, especially the first third of the game felt even more perfunctory than it did in the original game where, you know, everyone's going for the low value cards and or tiles and and. Sometimes you, you, you might fight, you know, want someone not to take that one. And I, in this one, it just kind of felt like the first third of the game was almost, okay, we're all just kind of doing our thing. It was really only later in the game that I felt like any tension in what other people were doing. Mm. What about the Avengers tile? I had it the whole well, time. Well, I didn't get the yes. Avengers tile. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that tile, so I wasn't a big fan. I'm saying it would be interesting if it like went around, but I very purposely yeah. made sure to continue to collect Avengers. So it's like, you want to come after the Avengers tile? Come at me. I got Captain America. I got this guy. I mean, it was very thematic the way it worked out. <laughs> I, I'll tell you one thing component-wise. I wish it would have included chips for that instead of the, those green chips. Right. That's the green chip that you get, the, the, the time stone. It's a it's an on or off situation, right? Mm. Like your your board state either contains one or doesn't. That's it. So you either are eligible to win or you aren't. It's a the, little weird. I don't get that because you don't need the other chips to win. So it's not like it's matching that. You need yeah. the other cards. So right, then why not so, just say, is there a green thing on your card? You're good. It, right. Maybe they had a yeah. certain number of chips they had to put in the game. I wish Could those be. chips would have been Avengers chips is what I'm saying. I know it takes more of them, but I wish that those would be something you could then count and look at the table and I don't have to find the little icon on everyone's cards. Right, I can just right. be like, you've got three? Well, I got more now. Give me that thing. Mm -hmm. But it's, that's nitpicking. you know. I, I still think it's a weird component choice to have the time stone be a chip that you cannot use, cash in, do literally anything with. No. All right, Mike, final thoughts. What's your rating? My final thoughts are I, I like it slightly less than uh, regular Splendor, believe it or not, because the theme to me is just so not there. that With, with Splendor, the, the lack of theme didn't mean anything because it's just this generic royalty thing. I know what these Marvel characters are, and I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to, you know, use Rocket Raccoon to help you get, you know... You know what I'm getting at? I feel the theme disconnect even more. And so I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. It's still Splendor. I don't think that it really brings anything else to the table except for more of a theme disconnect than it already had. I am going to go ahead and go next because I'm, I'm almost the same, but I actually am rating it the same as the original, a 6. This gets a 6 out of 10 for me. I think the theme disconnect is the theme disconnect. I'm not knocking it for that. Same deal. Prettier pictures. I'll take that over the theme is slightly more discombobulated true i also it's pretty so you know it's a wash for me um i will say i think you're gonna walk away a little happier if you simply have no knowledge of the original splendor yeah yes. you take this huh. game That's in true. a bubble brand new game never heard of it mm -hmm. some marvel game and you are you know you're not getting some thematic miniatures fighting game it's neat. You know, this is a good family game. It's a fine sure. game. You, you you know, the kids like Marvel. The family enjoys Marvel. You can throw this down on the table. Everybody can play. It's very easy, simple to get into. I think you're going to enjoy that. And I think you're going to enjoy it even more, like I'm saying, if you don't know anything about what Splendor was. Mm. But it's still a little flat. I think that first uh, third of the game, Mike, yeah, was right. It's a little um, unexciting. And I think everybody is sort of on the same path to victory every time. So a 6 out of 10 from me. Yeah, I really like the original game um, a lot, like I said. And this one also dropped for me. I don't oh, care wow. that there's a theme disconnect because that doesn't bother me that it's not there because it wasn't there in the original game. Same thing that Z said. And right. it is there's a little bit of fun like, oh, I got Captain America. This is my team. Mm -hmm. I guess. You're not actually using them to do anything. I'm just building a team of Avengers. Whatever. 
But the thing that bugs me is, it again, it forces you to do a little bit of everything. And I always played Splendor where I pick one color and just hope that that would do well. <laughs> and this, what Splendor does is it has those tiles that if you get four of one card or four of another card or three or three different cards, you get those bonuses. So it already had that built in. Right. Now this forces you to do it, and you're going to run out of that first card stack, and you have to take those because you. I have to get a purple card. Mm -hmm. I have to get, you know, and I found that to be less fun. I still enjoy it. It still moves fast, and there's something about throwing those poker chips around. <laughs> I'd give it a 7, which is considerably lower than my original rating. Wow. Uh, for me, I mean, this was, of course, my first time playing it, and I think, like Z said, maybe it did come into effect, the fact that I didn't have any Splendor backdrop. Um, I'd played other games, like um, Sentry and uh, Res Arcana and things like that that have a little bit of the same feel, and this feels like a lighter version of that whole, like, resource manipulation and management to buy things. Um, it felt like that, and I actually really enjoyed the game. I'm actually giving the game an 8. I took it home and played it with my kids, and we had a blast with it. Um, I, I'm a sucker for Marvel themes. I mean, obviously, most of what I review on the channel is Marvel stuff, but I uh, really enjoyed the whole thing. It's not thematic at all, but I just enjoyed the, the light collecting of chips and cashing them in to get different Marvel characters and getting different stuff. I mean, maybe maybe the original Splendor is even better, and maybe I need to check that out also, but uh, I enjoyed the game for yeah, what it was, and I had a lot of fun with theme, it. I, think. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I don't know if I could get away from yeah. the Marvel. I think, I think what a lot of people have been asking online is like, if I own Splendor, do I need to get this? And I don't know if that's, no. that's true at all, right? You know, you I mean, you can keep your regular you Splendor, Marvel. but if you if you don't have Splendor at all and you really enjoy Marvel, I say go ahead and try it if you want a light, family weight, extremely quick playing. And that's the main reason I like this game is because it's like turns are lightning fast. There's no downtime. It's back to your turn before you even realize it. And that's why I really enjoy Marvel Splendor. So that's why it's an eight for me. Nice. There you go, folks. Available now. Check it out. Um, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks, everybody. I'm Roy Kennedy. And I'm Mike Felicio. Take care. Have fun chipping. <laughs>